You know on your phone the buttons are laid out one to three on the top. Have you ever thought about actually why they're like that? It's not, it's not a chance at all. Like a lot of work back in the 50s went into deciding how phones should look at and it actually was all decided uh, just in this paper really. This is a, a technical report from Bell Labs. They were deciding what the phone should look like now that rotary dials um, were no longer the, the only way to dial a phone number. As, as touchtone came into things, they had the opportunity to design what a push-button phone should look like because no one had done it before. Some of our younger viewers might not be familiar with it. <laughs> I'm is... not familiar with it either. <laughs> did you ever live in a house with a rotary No, dial? of course I didn't. I did. Well, that tells us something about our ages, doesn't it? And, and you, you stick your, your, the finger in the hole and then you can, like, you have to drag the dial all the way around and then let it go and it goes back. And you have to do that for every phone number. But in the, in the 50s, uh, they were realising they had the technology to mean you didn't have to do that anymore. And you could actually just press buttons to get tones um, to, to, make the, to make the phone calls to, to dial out. Um, and so they were making a phone with buttons on it. The first thing they thought was that they could... Um, they could just put the buttons uh, in the same places where all the, the dials were. Well, it, yeah, it's okay, people can use it, but it doesn't have, there's no reason it has to be like that. So why, why keep it like that? Why not take the opportunity to have a bit of fun and be creative with things? Basically, they don't know if this is the best design either. Like, this is just a design that people are used to. What if there's another design out there that people are better at using? So they thought, this is one design, but we can have a whole, a whole host of other ways we can, we can design the number of layouts. Whoa. And so here we have a set of the designs they tried out. So this one is the, uh, this is like how calculators are laid out. Or in, in this paper, they refer to adding machines or like laying them out like a, like a brick wall, I guess. I don't know, or like a bowling alley or something like that. That one's quite insane, isn't it? Yeah, kind of heading up the machine. I, I mean, who knows what they were thinking. Like I said, they just had the opportunity to try anything out. But you do have to remember at this point, like the touchtone phone, the touchtone phone wasn't a common, it wasn't a common thing. Like it may seem to you and I that obviously they should use like a three by three grid, but like only people who had used adding machines and calculators at that time had had any experience of how numbers should be laid out. It's not a common thing. They got loads of people in from the labs and uh, they just, got people in and made them dial phone numbers. It was as, as, as simple as, as that. They were very good at, at testing human factors at Bell Labs. I'll tell you, uh, like a, a cool story, they were trying to work out how long the phone cord should be. And like, and the, 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 the copper in, in the cord is, is quite expensive. So they wanted to try and work out how short they could make it. Um, and the way they did that, they, the, the person in charge of like the human factors department um, went into everyone's rooms and started cutting the cables shorter and shorter and shorter until someone went hang on what's happening here and then at that point they were like okay that's the shortest it can probably go um they like they were really good at finding doing experiments to find the answers to these things yeah so they got people in and they got people to uh, just dial phone numbers on all of these different different layouts and they were they were testing for how quickly they could do it and how often they made errors when they were doing it what they find? What happened? <gasps> well, I think you know the ending <laughs> because you know what a phone looks like now. Um, but they, they kind of whittled these ones down um, and they came up with these um, five final designs. You can see they've given them some interesting names. They've called this one here Speedometer, which is quite funny. <laughs> Yeah, and so you can see they're, they're trying to test how quickly they go, how quickly people can type on them, like the percentage of errors that people make on them and, and how, how people preferred them. And you can see there's, there's, there's kind of a trade-off here. So like one of, the, one of the slowest ones was actually one of the most accurate ones. And that's a common thing we know if you go slower, you're more likely to be accurate. But actually there was no massive difference in the, in the timing and the, in, in the errors. And so what they did was they started to look at the people, at people's preference and people's, um, uh, how, which ones people hated the most. And because there was not much of a difference, what they went with was the one that would just for, for engineering reasons, they say, they went with this, the, um, the, the telephone layout. What's perhaps the most interesting thing, I think, is that they did compare the, um, the, the thing we're calling the telephone layout and the calculator layout. Um, and they found that the calculator layout was, was slower than the, the, the telephone layout. This paper, this is from 1955, so five years prior to that one. And they're trying to work out, they're, still, they're, they're starting to think about the buttons. They're not testing the actual machines yet, 
what they're doing in this paper is giving people blank layouts. So they're giving, they're giving people this, they're just, they're just giving people a booklet that just has this on it. And then they say to people, you have to put the numbers 0 to 9 in that grid. How are you going to do it? And again, remember, people haven't seen a telephone before, and few people have used a calculator before. And it turns out, when people filled this in, 55% of people chose the phone layout. 55% of people went, well, obviously it should go like this. You know, you start counting from the left-hand side. Only 8% 8, 8 of people did the... 8% of people did the, the calculator layout. 7% of people did um, this fairly peculiar layout. So they started with one. Yeah, obviously they start with one. But then what they did was they started to fill them in vertically like this, which is just baffles me. I'm not sure why that's the most sensible way to do it. Like I said, it's something you use a telephone so often and you just, you just don't really think about why on earth it should be like that. It just because you've been perhaps brought up with it, you just, like, obviously that's how numbers are laid out. But there was a time when people didn't know how numbers should be laid out. And so they had to do all of this type of um, experimentation to, to, to work it out. And it's, 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 really, it's a really good example of how human factors matters in, in design. You know, they, they assumed that this, this, this rotary would be the best, but it didn't end up being that way. And because of what they learned from experiments, we now have a, a telephone that's optimally designed for, for us. We'd like to thank Audible.com for supporting this video. Audible has a huge range, I think it's something like 150,000 audiobooks you can download. And you can download one for free if you go to audible.com slash number file. After watching this video, you might want to check out a book about Alexander Graham Bell or something about inventions. Or check out one of my all-time favourite books. It's called The Moat in God's Eye and it's about sort of first contact with an alien civilization and I could talk about it for hours, it's really cool and really clever. So thanks to audible.com for their support of us, and if you do want to go and have a look, maybe sign up and get that free book, you're probably doing us a favour as well. That's all for now, see you next time. But you have to, you have to balance up um, like accuracy with, with speed, like the ideal number ent entry interface, for, in terms of making like the most accurate one, might be one with the numbers spaced like like a foot apart or something like that so you have to physically move to press the buttons like that would be quite accurate probably but it would be incredibly slow and really annoying